Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my business partner and wonderful friend, Ananga Sevier. We come together weekly on Skype to share Anxiety Slayer sessions with you and enjoy answering listener questions from our inbox and Facebook page. Today, we're going to be talking about our favorite natural remedies to ease anxiety and calm your precious mind. Welcome back, Ananga. Hi, Shen. As you know, we're often asked uh, about natural remedies to uh, ease anxiety and calm our minds. And we talk about a lot of them kind of peppered throughout our podcast. But I thought it would be a good idea today to share a little bit of information about some of our favorites that we can pass along to our listeners. Let's begin with the Bach flower remedies and and how you got involved with those and then pass them along to me and so many of our listeners and why they're such a good part of our anxiety relief toolkit. I've mentioned many times on our podcast when I was in my youth, I suffered with awful anxiety. And one day I wandered into a little herb shop where they had big screw top jars all along the back of the shop, all these amazing herbs, valerian and chamomile flowers and all all wonderful herbs all stacked up along. And he had such a nice knowledge of herbs, but he recommended bark flower remedies to me, the wonderful herbalist called John Richardson. We're still friends today. And he recommended rescue remedy, but he was a bark flower practitioner and he had this fantastic little wooden case, very old fashioned wooden case with all the bottles in there. And he just used to get you a dropper bottle and some spring water and mix you up your custom remedies. So the first time I met him, he did that for me. And I noticed it helped. It brought some calm and some peace of mind. And then you'd go back to him and he'd make the remedy more specific each time more suited to whatever you were going through. And that's how I first discovered bark flower remedies, and I've been using them ever since. They've made such a big difference in your life over the years, and they have in mine in the the shorter period of time that I've been using them. And I especially like now having the um, rescue remedy in the spray bottle, where you can just quickly spray a couple drops on your tongue for travel. I bought a bottle for my daughter to have at school and it's uh, something that I use before any social gatherings or social engagements. I found it to be really, really useful. And the other one that I've used more than the rest uh, would be white chestnut. And you taught me a long time ago that white chestnut helps you stop those looping thoughts, those thoughts that we create about gloom, doom, and destruction. And sometimes if If I wake up in the middle of the night and I have a a really full head of those kinds of thoughts, white chestnut will help me calm my mind. Yeah, it's uh, super effective, white chestnut, for that. And of course, now they've combined it, bark flowers have combined that in a nighttime spray where you get the rescue remedy and the white chestnut combined in the one spray, which is helpful for settling down in the evening. Although I use it in the daytime as well if I'm going through it a spell of looping thoughts, and it really, really helps. And the deeper studies behind bark flowers are quite incredible. The work of Dr. Edward Bark, looking into all kinds of states of low mind, depression, unhelpful dialogues, when our mind turns in on itself, when we feel pessimistic, or we just feel like giving up and saying, what's the use? Or even if we're really disliking ourselves and feeling intense self-loathing, I've been consistently surprised over the years at just how deeply the bark flower remedies can help a mind with even some quite heavy mental states. Really a wonderful body of work that Dr. Bark put together. And the bark flower remedies can usually be found at holistic stores. We have them available at Oriana. I remember the first time finding them there after our our conversations years ago, like, oh, look, there they are. You know, so... It's just be a matter of becoming informed and then taking a look for them and just a few drops in a water bottle or a couple of sprays, you know, depending on what it is that uh, you're experiencing. And the nice thing, too, is that they have little information cards that help you understand what formulation is best for you. So, you know, it takes all the guessing out of, of what to do. We recommend to begin with Rescue Remedy. Begin with Rescue Remedy, and then you can go to barkflowers.com and have a look at their 
full range if you want to explore deeper. And yeah, they're very widely available now. Gone are the days where you have to get in your car and drive to Oxfordshire like we used to if you wanted the full set. <laughs> <laughs> so the other favorite natural remedy that we both enjoy, that we're probably both enjoying right now, I know I am, are herbal teas. Let's share some of our very favorite herbal teas. I know that one of my very, very, very favorites is chamomile. And I really uh, enjoy chamomile for calming and anxiety. And it's really been my go-to herbal tea when I'm feeling stressed and anxious. But there are several others. And I know that you have an even greater cabinet full of tea than I do. So let's talk about some of your favorites. Yeah, tea's my go-to if I'm sick, if somebody in the house has got a headache or sore throat, upset stomach, anxiety. Tea is the thing I turn to first. I really use it like medicine. And I think that it's easy for us to underrate the effectiveness of tea for calming stress and anxiety. And you were talking about uh, chamomile tea. That's definitely one of my favorites. My friend Sebastian Pohl at Pucker Herbs taught me that not all chamomile tea is created equal. The most potent part of the chamomile flower for calming anxiety is actually in the pollen. It contains some amazing healing and calming benefits. So it's very important when you choose chamomile tea to choose one where you get the whole flower. Sometimes people drink chamomile tea and they say it just tastes like grass. And that's right. usually not a good chamomile tea. You want the whole flowers, and chamomile is extremely good for anxiety. It's not just some hippie, new age tea. It's extremely helpful. And you also like to have green tea and fennel tea. Talk about some of the benefits of, of those teas. I know that green tea is super good for our bodies, for you know, our entire body. Green tea is great because everyone speaks these days about antioxidants, and we know that green tea is high in antioxidants. But it's also a little astringent. It can be a little drying. And if we're suffering from anxiety, we need to be careful with that and also careful that there's caffeine in green teas. My recommendation would be to brew it once and then brew again so you brew the caffeine off. Of course, you will lose some of the antioxidants with that also. But green tea is very cleansing, very clearing. If you mix it with jasmine, it becomes more relaxing, more soothing, gives more clarity to the mind. Uh, Lavender tea brings clarity and calm. Lavender wakes up the mind and calms the mind. If you want to make a flower tea for calming anxiety, really nice to bring some lavender and some rose in with the chamomile and you can have a really nice, gentle, healing, flowery blend for soothing anxiety. That can be nice to sip just warm in the summer or to make yourself a nice strong brew before bed at night. And also oat straw, the flowering tops of oat straw It's also very calming and soothing to the nervous system. So sometimes you can find good herb companies that know how to create blends like that of different flowering plants that are really good for calming anxiety. In the past, you've also talked about drinking licorice tea. Tell me a little bit more about that. I use it every day. Uh, There is a caution if you have low blood pressure to not overdo it with licorice, so I should just mention that. Licorice has got this incredible property where it revives the mucous membranes in the body. So if ever you wake up with a dry mouth, a dry, scratchy throat, you feel dehydrated. If you sip licorice tea, you can feel the membranes in your mouth hydrate. And if you have a sore throat, you can feel it soothing the sore throat. It's really quite an incredible spice. It tastes delicious. And it's one of those spices you love it or hate it. I personally really get on very well with licorice. It goes very well in other tea blends where there may be some bitterness because licorice is naturally sweet. It can be used in chai tea. Sometimes it's used in chai, brought in there with cinnamon, cardamom. That's a very good spicy warming blend for calming the nervous system. If you're going to use chai, better to use a decaffeinated tea, like red bush tea, which is less astringent, less drying to the system than regular tea and naturally has no caffeine. So like a red bush chai with licorice, cardamom, maybe some fennel, ginger, Spices like that can be very warming and sweet and very calming to the nervous system. Licorice is very, very good for stress. Magnesium drinks are a great choice to reduce stress and to promote sleep. So if you're having trouble sleeping, we highly recommend a a magnesium drink before bed to help promote a good night's rest. 
Yeah, I forgot to take my magnesium last night and I had to get up and, and take it. I was feeling a little unsettled and I definitely went into a better sleep once I'd done that. Great thing about magnesium drinks, as we've discussed before, is that when it's in a good quality, soluble form, the magnesium is very easily assimilated into our system. So Nanga, what's the difference then between making a magnesium drink and then, or taking a, a supplement? Does the drink get into your system faster? Is that how that works? Yeah, it's as simple as that. It's soluble. It goes straight into the system. It's the same with when we cook healing foods in Ayurveda. If somebody's you know, for children or elderly people or people who are sick, it's always recommended to cook meals which are very easily digestible, like kitri is a very wet, warm, easy to digest dish with nice spices to ease digestion gets right where it needs to go. And whenever I've been low energy or ill and I eat something like Kitri, my body seems to really thank me for it. it. It takes all the energy and the effort out of digestion. So with supplements, it's really important that we have good quality, easily assimilated supplements. Ayurveda says it's not what we eat that really counts, it's what we digest, what we can digest. So if something's in a soluble form, a good quality soluble form, then it gets right into the system. And of course, you can also drink these good things in through your skin. So a magnesium bath is always very helpful because the magnesium just seeps in through the tissue layers of the body as you relax in the warm water. That's another good way to take magnesium. And then you also want to make sure that you find a good quality magnesium because I know a couple of episodes ago we were talking about magnesium and how there is um, uh, you know, different grades. There's food grade magnesium. And then there's, uh, what, what did you call it? Um, lab grade. Lab grade magnesium. And I didn't realize that there was a difference in the magnesium for, you know, that I bathe with. And now I'm on the lookout for the right kind. Natural Vitality has a nice one that's a combination of lavender and magnesium. Uh, you know, just again, something I didn't know that I know now for, for a better bath, for a better supportive ritual than than using the lab grade yeah as clean and as as pure as we can we can get is better and the natural calm bath product is definitely clean food grade and nice that it's mixed with the lavender as well blended with lavender as we've already said lavender is so incredibly helpful for relaxing the muscles calming and clearing the mind it's it's just a underrated herb you know we see it everywhere and get we we take it for granted but it's very powerful very soothing healing herb. So it's wonderful that they've mixed that in with their bath product as well. Another one of my very favorite drinks before bed is warm almond milk with nutmeg. And as we've mentioned before, the, the milk helps you get drowsy and, and fall asleep and the, nut, the nutmeg actually helps you stay asleep. And, and in my personal experience, I fall asleep quite easily, but the staying asleep is a little bit of a trick. So now that I know that a, that a little bit of nutmeg can help me stay asleep, uh, this, is, this is a go-to for me as well. Yeah, nutmeg's a powerful sedative. It's, it's so powerful that we should be careful to really only add a pinch to our, to our milk. It's a very active herb, and in large doses it can be a psychoactive herb. So yeah, it's a powerful Sedative pinch of nutmeg in a cup of milk keeps you asleep. And then you can use that with either nut milks or cow's milk. I, I just don't drink cow's milk, so I choose almond or cashew or um, one of the other milks that, that is available outside of cow's milk. Yeah, same here. Um, I prefer almond milk because almonds are very good for the nervous system. You can make your own almond milk by soaking almonds overnight and blending and straining them the next morning. And then you get all the goodness from the almonds. Again, it makes all the goodness that's in the almond easily assimilated into your body. And almonds are very nourishing for the nervous system. So by picking almond milk, you're, you're doing a doubly good thing there. Also, you can add a pinch of saffron, which is very soothing to the heart. Oh, so you can do saffron, nutmeg, and almond milk? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good to know. All right. So now that we've talked about some of our very favorite drinks, we also need to cover some of the drinks that can trigger anxiety that you need to be aware of that uh, by avoiding these drinks, you're going to be uh, really giving yourself a, a sweet gift 
and and that is uh, caffeinated beverages. Stay away from them as as much as you possibly can. Stay away from soda and Red Bull and coffee. By eliminating that from my diet almost completely has made such a big difference. Such a big difference. Yeah, I think it's sometimes not until you cut it out that you realize how much it was affecting you. When we keep getting a racing heart and we keep feeling that tension in our chest, very often that can be induced by caffeine and it will get put down to anxiety or it might trigger anxiety because it's not a good feeling, that adrenaline state in the chest doesn't feel good at all well and you notice there are still so many who haven't learned that yet and so you'll see folks drinking caffeinated soda throughout the day you know starting with coffee and then moving to soda and then and then perhaps even moving to alcohol and all of those things uh, really really take a toll on your body mind and soul so please be mindful of caffeine and also be mindful of alcohol because you might fall asleep easily if you've had alcohol before bed, but chances are you won't stay asleep and you certainly won't get a good night's rest even if you didn't wake up. You know, your, your body is going through the detoxification process. That doesn't feel good either. Yeah, we, we use the term intoxicated. I think we often use words without really examining them, but intoxicated, it's got toxic in it. So when you drink alcohol, your liver has to do a whole job to cleanse your blood and get your system clear again, clear of that alcohol. And the liver does most of its work in the middle of the night. It does it when we're deeply asleep. If we've been drinking, then it has to work extra hard. And that's why many people who've had a drink wake up feeling agitated and disturbed at 2 a.m. in the morning because that liver energy is, is provoked. So... It's better to hydrate during the day, use relaxing herbs, take some walks in nature, find other ways to relax and other ways to, we use the saying, take the edge off. Personally, I don't do at all well with alcohol. I haven't touched it for about 30 years now. And if I need to relax, I'll use herbs like chamomile, gentle soothing teas, walks in nature, EFT tapping, breathing practices. Then uh, I know I've got a better chance of relaxing without having to put my liver through that detoxification process and also agitating my mind because it really does amp the mind up. It can make our dreams vivid and disturbing and it can affect our mental state. So definitely something to avoid if you can. Well, yeah, because on, on top of that, you also can have the anxiety, the, the, the looping thoughts of if you had too much to drink, what did I say? What did I do? And you can blow things out of proportion, make things bigger, you know, make things um, even more uncomfortable. So then it becomes, you know, is that worth it? Is that, is that worth it to put yourself through those paces? I, and I think it's not. Yeah, it's really easy to go that route and then have regrets or, or just feel like, you know, somebody let the, li the lid off your mind, somebody opened the can and all kinds of thoughts come flying out that you really felt that you were sitting on. It takes a little time and it takes a little change of direction to, to reduce and make the adjustments, switching it over to herbal teas, deep breathing, adding in some EFT tapping, bringing some rescue remedy in it. It's a lifestyle change, but it's one that for me has certainly been extremely beneficial and I wouldn't change it for anything now. It's brought me so much more peace of mind. Well, I'm really glad that we got together today to talk about some of our favorite natural remedies to ease anxiety and to calm our minds. And then of course, those to to stay away from. It's always a pleasure sharing time with you, Ananga. And to all of our listeners, thank you so much for listening in to Anxiety Slayer. We really appreciate you listening in. And if you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you'd share it wherever you spend time online to help us reach out to as many anxiety sufferers as we can. Thanks again.